Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna. Everyone here is uh, regularly attending Bhakti Sangha programs. They call them this country, Bhakti Sangha. Are there any newcomers or old, old comers? Yes, no, maybe. Have to think about it. Take us. <laughs> Who's regularly been coming to programs, Krishna Conscious program? Please raise your hand. Shaved up and in Brahmachari class, but is not coming to the programs. Who are okay, Who's not regularly? Who's a newcomer? Okay. I just so I can understand how I, what level I should speak. Srila Prabhupada, when he was first preaching in the West, he was in his uh, first preaching means the first few years people were. For the first few years, people were just amazed. They, they, they couldn't imagine when they saw... When they saw, of course, Prabhupada was in New York, which is a very cosmopolitan city. Which, if you haven't been there, you can't imagine what it's like. If you've been to London, something like that, a very cosmopolitan city. Where there are people from all over the world and all kinds of strange things go on there. So Prabhupada himself, when he was in New York who wasn't so strong he was an old Indian man from the external point of view but when Prabhupada's American disciples started shaving their heads and going out in the streets and chanting Hare Krishna even in New York it attracted quite some attention even in those days the mid 1960s where things were going a little strange the hippies were, their motto was to be different. But Prabhupada was, and his followers were more different than anyone. So in the beginning you'll find um, early publications of the Krishna Consciousness Movement with articles like, What is Krishna Consciousness? And in Prabhupada's books you'll find, just like at the beginning of Krishna book, in the introduction, Prabhupada writes that many people, when they see the picture of Krishna, they ask, Who is Krishna? And who is that girl with Krishna? And then Prabhupada, throughout the whole introduction, he explains who is Krishna. He didn't explain who is the girl with Krishna. That's more confidential. But anyway, in the beginning, people are afraid, What is this? What's it all about? Whereas Prabhupada's preaching in India was somewhat different. <laughs> Because in India people know something about Krishna. They know less than they think they do, and probably too much of the wrong things. But they think they know something about Krishna. So in India, Prabhupada's preaching is more like, not exactly, not from the very basic level, but more to throw out the misconceptions. Because India is very interesting in the sense that, as Prabhupada said, everyone in India is Krishna conscious. That doesn't mean they're pure devotees. It's like Prabhupada also said, Kamsa was Krishna conscious. Krishna conscious means thinking of Krishna. To be aware. Consciousness, what does that mean? When we say Krishna consciousness, that in its fullest sense means to be always thinking of Krishna favorably, to be a pure devotee. But consciousness at the minimum level means to be aware of, at least in English. I am conscious that I am aware I am conscious that it is hot I am we are conscious of it it means that we are not thinking of it it is hot it is hot it is hot we are aware so Prabhupada said everyone in India is Krishna conscious at least there is some awareness of Krishna it doesn't mean they are all pure devotees so Krishna conscious but still conditioned souls. So what happens when people are aware of Krishna 
and maybe they have some affection towards Krishna. Some you'll see even now in the temples in India on Jan Mashtami, you'll find so many, literally tens of in, in Bombay in our temple, we'll find literally uh, they they reckon up to one million visitors in one day. Well, the day goes on until about five o'clock the next morning, but like that, the huge crowd. So the. There is at least sentiment for Krishna. But still people are conditioned souls. And Krishna teaches in Bhagavad Gita how not to be a conditioned soul, which is Sarvadhamantaritya Mame Kamsharnam Braja. To give up all concocted ideas of what it means to be religious and simply surrender to me. But people are conditioned souls. And conditioned souls, they have far. Uh, prominent tendencies called Brahm Pramad Vipra Lipsa Karana Patav, which means uh, to be to make mistakes, to be illusioned, to have a cheating propensity, and to have imperfect senses. So when someone approaches Krishna in a different mood to that of Arjuna, Arjuna Shishya Stayang Shadi Mountain Prapadna. Now I'm willing to accept what you say. I'm in a submissive mood. When people approach Krishna in a different mood, maybe some sentiment, but not very much prepared to surrender to him, then we get all kinds of different ideas, and that is called Hinduism. And it is quite an astonishing mix. There are all kinds of different ideas, which, uh, as Prabhupada also said about Indian peace, he said Hinduism is a, uh, I can't remember exactly, but uh, he said it's a, it's a concocted hodgepodge going on under the auspices of Mayavad. So you'll find people who are devotees of Krishna, but very, very, some very strange attitudes, just like as that's described in Prabhupada Lilamrita, how one of Prabhupada's disciples, when he was first in India, he was he was visiting the Radha Damodar temple where they have many deities. Actually, originally there were each deity is supposed to have his own temple, but they brought all the different deities in, in one temple and then sold off the land and property. <laughs> so, uh, so one uh, Pujari was asking him, which one do you like? I like that one. It reminds me of King George the Sixth. So strange attitude. Very strange attitudes. And there are so many strange attitudes. There. You'll find uh, so many people there, they'll come to the temple and they'll go like this. And, uh, but if you speak with them, they'll say, Well, I don't believe in Krishna, but we're doing it. It's, it's our duty, it's our religion. We should maintain our religion. We hate the Muslims. And, so we should come to the temple. And, and so many funny ideas. And they end in the name of Krishna. Yes, we're eating meat. Krishna never said in Bhagavad Gita that you shouldn't eat meat. So many funny ideas. So Prabhupada, he was preaching in India differently to the way he was preaching in the West. Because according to the people's mentality, what does preaching mean? Preaching means to address the... Uh, un Krishna conscious mentality of people. Point out what is the defect. Show what is the actual fact that we're supposed to surrender to Krishna. In preaching there are two phases, two two main divisions, Prem Pracharan or Pashanda Dalam. That means to teach love of God and to smash all the bogus ideas. And the bogus people also. Actually, that's what it means. So, of course, it's easy to talk about prem, love of Krishna. But what happens is that you get the, you give the idea of love of Krishna and his people's head, and it mixes with all their misconceptions, which are born of rascaldom because they don't want to surrender to Krishna. So this brahm pramad vipralipsa karana patav, we 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 misunderstand about Krishna. We make st mistakes about Krishna. We are, have the cheating propensity. So we say, yes, yes, I love Krishna. Even people, they have these t-shirts. I love Krishna. They're so they're proclaiming, I love Krishna. As they're smoking their cigarette. So, uh, 
Brahm Pramad Vipsa Lipsa and, and imperfect senses. So all these, when the idea of love of Krishna comes in the head and, it, and we mix it up with all our imperfections, and then we don't get love of Krishna. We may get something that we sentimentally consider to be love of Krishna, or we may cheat ourselves and cheat others that we're in love of Krishna. But actual love of Krishna means we have to, first of all, follow what Krishna tells us to do. We have to give up our material attachments and surrender to Krishna. There's no love of Krishna without surrender to Krishna because our constitutional position is servant and his constitutional position is master. So without first accepting that, without accepting his terms and conditions, there is no question of love. So that's what we find, a, a general kind of mix-up, which is why I was asking who's here and who's new and who's coming regularly. Because it's different when we're preaching to new people. When we're preaching to people newly coming, then we're preaching you know, what is Krishna consciousness basically. And then with older people, usually it's, okay, you came in, you got this far, and now here we are. We're stuck here with all our misconceptions and our attachments and and uh, very often if we're not seriously applying ourselves to the process and if we're not uh, actually surrendering to Krishna if we're not getting good association or in the name of Krishna consciousness we may be getting bad association that's also possible because so many people say so many things so it may be that in the name of Krishna consciousness we're, as Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has warned that we're cultivating something which is not actually Krishna conscious, but it may look something like Krishna conscious. So it can be a very subtle difference. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu gave the example that we are cultivating a creeper of bhakti. A creeper can grow up with the support of a strong tree. So that the creeper of bhakti that is growing, being watered by hearing and chanting about Krishna. But it's also possible that with the, if we're not careful to take out the weeds, then a bogus creeper will grow up, or several of them, which look like the real thing, but which is actually the wrong thing, and which chokes the actual creeper of love of God. It's also possible, although this example isn't given by Chaitanya Mahaprabhu directly, but we can extrapolate the example a bit, that uh, the hearing and chanting, it's just like if you put uh, poisonous water. One thing, one thing, if you don't put water, then the creeper will dry up, as we see this summer. Everything's drying up because there's, no, there's not rain or no sufficient rain. Or the other thing is if we put some poisonous water, then the, uh, again the creeper will be poisoned. It won't grow nicely. So we have to be very careful. A gardener knows that you have to be, you have to tend. The plants have to be looked after in a certain way. Even when you put, even at the very beginning, the seed, each individual seed needs to be planted in a certain type of soil to get the best result. And then you have to plant it at a, at a certain depth, and you may have to make furrows. You know, furrows where you have to make the land like this. If you make furrows. And then you have to water every so different plants require a different amount of water, and then as they get bigger, then you have to transplant them. And there's so many different things. If the if your gardening is going to be successful, it's the science. People even go to the university to study. Previously, they just learned from their fathers. Now they go to the university to study how to grow plants. So in the same way, Krishna consciousness, it is a science. It has to be executed in a proper manner, otherwise the proper result won't be there. You may get some plant, and it may grow up so far, but then it may not grow any further, or it may not give flowers or fruits. If you stop watering or put the wrong kind of, or some poisoned water, or, or tap water with lots of chlorine, whatever it may be, then the plant won't grow very nicely. This is why Prabhupada, he subtitled the book called The Nectar of Devotion, he gave the subtitle, The Complete Science of Bhakti Yoga, Devotional Science. 
complete science. And we'll find in the, in the nectar of devotion so many rules and regulations. Do this, don't do that. So all these rules and regulations are meant to help us uh, go ahead properly in bhakti. If we follow, then we'll advance fast. And if we don't, then we won't. That's all. If we think, well, you know, no need to water the plants. No, we can just put any water. Just, uh, in, in, instead of, you see, I've got a good idea. Instead of watering with just, you, you know, 100, uh, 100 milliliters every day to save myself the work, I'll come every 10 days and put one whole big bunch of water. That's a good idea. Right? It doesn't work like that. There's a science how to do it. Well, one of our devotees, sees, he grew these Tulsi plants so high, up above my head. And he went for uh, his Braja Mandal Parikram. And he told everyone, don't put water on Tulsi. And of course they did. They came back and the plants were all finished. Because at that season, there's enough in the soil there's enough water. If you put more, then they're going to rot. So huge plants he grew up and finished. Because they, they thought, we're doing something very good out of sentiment. They thought, we should water Tulsi. Why is he depriving? Why is he depriving Tulsi of water? We should put water. And the result, they all died. He came back from Rajamanda Parikha, all these beautiful Tulsi. Oh, so we should be very careful. We there is a we we have a tendency to take to Krishna conscious sentimentally. And if anyone comes along and smiles and says, "Oh, this is really wonderful," and they give some reference, you see, Prabhupada was doing this or something. He may or may not have been doing. Or. Somehow or other people, they try to mix Krishna consciousness with materialistic ideas. Ideas that are not given in Shastra, not given by Acharyas, not given by bona fide gurus. And we think, well, that would be really good, you know, if we just mix in a little bit of that. And, you know, if we have our... What we really need to develop Krishna consciousness is Vastu. The real problem why we're not becoming Krishna conscious is because... We don't have everything organ, organ, organized according to Vastu. So this is the solution to all the problems. I'm just giving an example. There are so many examples. So, I mean, I'm not against Vastu. It's, it's a bona fide Vedic science. But you can have everything perfect Vastu and still go to hell. <laughs> and you can have everything the worst Vastu, you chant Hare Krishna and you go to Krishna. So it's supplementary at best. But I'm just giving as an example how someone you know, becomes so, uh, this is really it, you know. Uh, what we really need to preach Krishna consciousness is a, is a hard rock band that will make all the difference. <laughs> This, you know, all these years we've been pre preaching Krishna consciousness and we never really understood that what is really going to make the difference and really make everyone become fully Krishna conscious is to have a hard rock band with me as the lead singer. So, we have all these different ideas. And, and we find some quote, you see, Prabhupada also went to some concert of devotee then. Prabhupada liked it, and of course he stopped it later, but, uh, you know, take that quote out, out, and, you know, oh yeah, this is, this is it. So there are so many ways in which uh, we cheat up, just like there was one devotee I was staying with, this is quite a long time ago. So uh, I said, hey Prabhu, you know, you're getting up every morning at 8 o'clock, this is no good. What's the problem? You're getting up early, but you take rest in the day, I just sleep all at one big stretch, what's the difference? He didn't follow that. He said to me, well, you're rising early, to me, but then you take rest in the day. So I just sleep all in one stretch. It's the same. What is the difference? It's a good argument, isn't it? What is the problem with this argument? The problem is that our gurus, 
All our previous acharyas, by practice and precept, have instructed to rise early, to take advantage of the Brahma Mahuta. So it becomes a specious argument, bogus, you can say, it's a better known word, bogus argument. So like this, there are many different ideas which we may suggest in our own heads or others may suggest to us, which seem pretty good. That's it, okay. Or they may say, you know, why, you know, why be, why be so fanatical about Krishna consciousness? You should you know, take it easy, be normal and integrate with life as it is. We have to be, we're living in the real world. That's bogus. We're not living in the real world. The real world is Kalok Vrindavan. That's the whole problem. We think this is real. We think that the way people are living, this this is actually reality. And we should we should integrate with that, and then and then people will like us more, and that that will make everyone Krishna conscious. So what it all amounts to is uh, various forms of self-deception and which is actually the root of this is actually our unwillingness to surrender to Krishna which is actually uh, enviousness of Krishna because we don't want to surrender to Krishna. So it's just like Prabhupada said when I came to the West it was so easy to preach because in India as soon as you say something say well Swamiji what about this what about that and they'll make this argument and that argument and try to avoid surrendering to Krishna which is why Prabhupada would come in with a sledgehammer in his preaching. This is rascal. It's say open door. Not, well, yes, that's a very good argument. Let's consider this this way. We have to respect everyone's opinion. No. We respect Krishna's opinion. And any other opinion, we don't respect. Because it's bogus. It's envious of Krishna. So, that's one way of preaching. Of course, you could say, well, people may not like it. But the preacher's duty is not to simply have people like him on the superficial level, but his duty is to preach in such a manner that they can understand what is the truth. And if they don't, if they insist on being on rascals, what can you do? At least it's your duty to say so. Then uh, in the West, Prabhupada said it was so easy because you just go and tell people that this is Krishna conscious and people, many people, they just take it up. But now, not like that. Now we have the Western version of Hinduism, minus the inherent piety of Indian people. Because it's the same tendency that we hear something about Krishna and we like it and we try to follow it, but then for whatever reason we take it easy, we relax a little bit and then we say, well, you know, it's like this and we have to be realistic and this is good and that's good and everything is good and yes just avoid surrendering to Krishna so this is the western world today it's when we're preaching Krishna conscious among people who have taken to Krishna conscious we generally we generally find that Devotees, they get stuck at a certain point, and then they they uh, they try to justify that. Okay, don't push me anymore. I'm just I'm here now, so just leave me like this. So my duty as a sannyasi is to come around and give everyone a little kick. <laughs> or a big kick. <laughs> and I mean you can also just pat people and say yes, yes, what you're doing is very nice. And actually it's true also. If you look from one other perspective, it's also true. Because anyone who's chanting Hare Krishna, that's very nice. But on the other hand, Without a, it's just like a car that's stalled, you know. 
Sometimes you need to give it a little push. Stall, you know, you're drawing... Stops. You get water in the petrol or something like that. So the kind of st- so it needs a you need to push start it. So it needs a little bit of a push. Prabhupada said ours is a pushing movement. Prabhupada said that my Guru Maharaj is pushing me. I am pushing you, referring to his disciples, and you should push others. So of course we should know how to push people towards Krishna. The problem is, sometimes when you push people, they run away, further away from Krishna. Oh, I have to surrender? Well, <laughs> There's always the Sai Baba temple, I can go there. <laughs> so, it's actually a test of our sincerity, that we have to look and see. Are we ready to, do we really want to surrender to Krishna? What do we have to do? What should we do to improve our situation? How can we follow more strictly and carefully? What can we do to serve Lord Chaitanya's mission? So actually the process of Krishna consciousness is very simple. Very simple. It's so simple that it's it's amazing how simple it is and yet somehow other people always try to make it more complex. So just as a reminder, the process of Krishna consciousness is that we rise early in the morning, chant the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra, minimum 16 rounds on beads, uh, observe Mangalati and Kirtan early in the morning, associate with devotees, associate with mean devotees means that not that we simply come together and say, hello, how are you? But we perform devotional service together, devotional activities, hearing, chanting, offering prasadam, going on sankirtan. Uh, Then we study Prabhupada's books, we follow what's in Prabhupada's books. And as much as possible, we try to spread Krishna consciousness. So it's a very simple formula, and if we follow that, then we become ecstatic. We get blessed with Krishna's mercy. The nectar of the benediction moon of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's Sankhita movement shines on us, and our life becomes enriched with the bliss of Krishna consciousness. But we have to be very careful this tendency to take it easy and we also have to be careful of becoming sidetracked do you know this word? going off on a, on a side tangent we have to be very careful because that tendency is very strong and even you see there are so many I'm, I'm a, you may think you know, you know why am I speaking like this because I speak like this because I've observed maybe in Croatia more than in many other places there are many strange ideas floating around in the name of Krishna consciousness I'm not sure exactly if the, if the waves have reached to Chagovic it's almost on the border of three other countries isn't it? Austria, Hungary and Slovenia so, uh, but anyway, I want to make this point, and I'll be making more as I stay in this area for the next few days. That Krishna consciousness is very simple, but we have to follow it as it is. Prabhupada always used this term, as it is. We should follow Krishna consciousness as Prabhupada has given it to us. And by Prabhupada's mercy, we'll go to Krishna. It's very simple. But if we mix up with so many different funny ideas, then we'll get mixed up in the material world. We'll remain in the material world. Now, one very great danger is that often it's the, these all kind of materialistic or strange semi-spiritual or pseudo-spiritual ideas, they're being introduced 
from within our ISKCON, or what's supposed to be ISKCON. That makes it more dangerous, because then we think that, well, you know, it's a devotee said that, and even a senior devotee. So we tend to think that, well, just because some senior devotee does something or says something that is authorized, but we should develop a sense of discrimination based on Guru, Sadhu, and Shastra, particularly what we know that Prabhupada has taught. If we want to advance clearly, then we have to understand what Prabhupada has taught and follow that. And if we see something different, then whoever is saying that, even they may be you know, temple president, GBC, guru, or whatever, then if it's not what Prabhupada taught us, if it's, a, if it's a clear deviation, then we should know this isn't going to help us. It's not going to help us develop our love of Krishna. So these are very simple principles, which uh, I'm sorry I, I feel the need to speak like this, but it's inevitable. It's inevitable. Wherever Krishna consciousness is preached, it, that's the whole story of the material world. People come to the material world because we're, we come here because we're envious of Krishna. And then Lord Brahma receives the Vedic knowledge from Krishna and he speaks it. And he disseminates it through great sages, his mental born sons like Marichi and Narad and Kratu and so many others. And uh, they disseminate it, but uh, and they're born from Brahma, there are different kinds of people born from Brahma and then from Prajapatis like Kashapa and Daksha, there, there are different kinds of people who are born including the Rakshasas and the, the Asuras and the Daityas and the Dhanavas as well as the demigods and the Siddhas and the, the Rishis and the human beings. And then even among human beings there are different kinds of people who present different kinds of philosophy which are superficially based on the Vedas. And so we get teachers like Jaimini and uh, Karad and Gautam and Ashtavakra. They, they teach different philosophies among the pious people. These uh, bogus philosophies, they're preached among pious people who are interested in transcendence. Not, these philosophies are not preached among the Rakshas. Because they're just Rakshas. They're not interested in any such thing. But the wrong ideas are preached among people who have a pious tendency, but something is something is wrong. They're not really on the on the line to surrender to Krishna. And uh, and then in the modern age, then we get so many strange things. I gave an example just now, Sai Baba. I mean, he's a prominent example of the madness that goes on in the name of spiritual life. That uh, people, they think he's God, which is, uh, anyone who's got any knowledge of the science of God, they can understand immediately this person is absolutely a cheater. <laughs> but people who, uh, they're not interested in, they're not interested in understanding according to Shastra or even common sense, then they're cheated. As Prabhupada said, there are many cheaters who will come to cheat you. If you want to be cheated, there are, there's a whole gang of cheaters lined up. I'm God. No, I'm God. No, I'm God. There are so many bogus gods, all denying the supremacy of Krishna. So that, that's an extreme example. But uh, it's the same tendency. Brahma spoke the rishis spoke, and then later different people came, and they're also Vedic scholars and sadhus, and they speak so many things, and people get misled. So it's inevitable, as a, you see, the same thing happened. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu came and gave the Krishna conscious movement, uh, the chant Hare Krishna, very simple. And then later, in uh, actually just after the disappearance of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, so many funny, Aal, Dal, Kata, Bhajan, Nera, Dharavesh, Sai, Sahajya, Smarta, Goranga Nagari, Jat Gosai, there's, they're 30, I'm not remembering all the names just now. So all these funny different uh, Upper Sampradayas came out, which means, Upper Sampradaya means that there's something looks right about them, but on the other hand there's something inherently wrong. So they lo it looks like it could be quite good. Just like Goranga Nagari, they're famous, they do very sweet kirtan, and they worship Lord Chaitanya. That's good, isn't it? They do sweet kirtan, and they, they uh, 
the they worship Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, but they've made a cardinal mistake that they consider Chaitanya Mahaprabhu to be in the mood of enjoying Vishnu Priya. They put him in the mood of an enjoyer. Krishna is the enjoyer. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is Krishna, but he's come in the mood of the servant of Krishna. So they're, they're interfering with Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's mood. And then sahajya, there are so many. Sahajya means that the sahajya means that which is natural. So they, there's not there's not something new. You've heard these ideas in Croatia that you should just you know get in touch with your inner being and uh, do be natural and don't try to do anything artificial. This is exactly sahajya philosophy. Sahaj means that which is natural. And the sahajya idea is that you should just, exactly what I said, you should just do what is natural. And what does it end up in sex? Because when you start thinking about my natural inner feelings, and you're not a pure devotee of Krishna, then it comes down to sex. So you're fine. My inner feelings. And it ends up with, you know, running away with someone else's wife. Or in, in the uh, Bengali Sahajya tradition, you don't run away with them, you just have, you know, you just all mix up. That's all. So all these bogus things came out after Chaitanya Mahaprabhu spread Krishna consciousness, and exactly the same thing is happening after Prabhupada. He spread Krishna consciousness very widely, people became attracted, and afterwards, so many different ideas came out. Well, you know, we could just do it a little bit differently. This will be really wonderful. You know, Prabhupada taught everything, but I've got a better, you know, just a little bit, something different. And you end up, you know, we have to have another list. Bhakti Nov Thakur gave a list of 13, and we'll, we'll have another list. <laughs> but it's all, it's, it's all the same basic tendencies. That we, we don't want to surrender to Krishna. We want to have sense gratification in the name of Krishna. And innocent people are very easily misled. They don't see the difference. The innocent means why be innocent? Prabhupada has given us so many books. We should read them and understand and follow them. Then we won't be misled. So please don't be misled. Read Prabhupada's books. Read them in what mood? Sarva meta gritanglanye yang lang vadisikeshan. Just like Arjun said to Krishna, that my dear Krishna, I accept everything you say. Not that, well, Prabhupada said this, but actually we should interpret it just a little bit differently. Finished. Everything finished. So please follow Krishna consciousness as it is, as given to us. By Srila Prabhupada. It's a very straightforward process. If we follow it, we'll go to Krishna. If we don't, if we try to modify it according to our own sense gratificatory ideas, then we won't go to Krishna. We won't get the result. It's, it's a scientific process, just like with the plants and the trees. If you don't if you don't look after them in the proper standard way, they may grow but not in the proper way. You won't get the fruits and flowers. You'll get some kind of stunted tree. So you may uh, you may fool yourself that this is the real thing, but it's not. So please be very careful. The process of Krishna consciousness is given to us by Prabhupada is always there. We can always take to it. But uh, we have to be very careful not to be misled by others and not to cheat ourselves in the name of Krishna consciousness. Hare Krishna. Any question about this? Yeah. Prabhupada was so successful in preaching consciousness, Krishna consciousness in the West because he was he, he used to preach according to Kaladesh and Pakistan. Prabhupada was successful in preaching Krishna consciousness in the West because he preached according to time, place and circumstance. Yeah. yeah. And so but he didn't, he didn't adjust himself to the time, place, and circumstance. He adjusted the time, place, and circumstance to Krishna consciousness. He knew the art. He didn't become the time, place, and circumstance. <laughs> I wanted to ask, what is the... It takes a little bit of intelligence to know... It takes intelligence and... 
don't think I'd become more intelligent than Vyasadeva and Prabhupada. Certainly it requires intelligence. It requires intelligence to distinguish between that which is real and that which is not. But if the intelligence is fixed, then it's very clear right from the beginning. That's what. So, any other question? Yeah, please. What does Krishna consciousness mean for me? Well, basically, Krishna consciousness is the same for everyone. Krishna consciousness means to be conscious of Krishna. <laughs> so, a person who is Krishna, con- as Prabhupada said, a person who is in Krishna consciousness, he has his symptoms, just like a rich man has his symptoms. So the basic symptom is satitam kirtayantam angyatantas chajura prataha that one should uh, always be engaged in glorifying Krishna and with uh, great commitment serving Krishna all the time. So my one day how it is, it's different every day actually. But personally I'm, uh, I'm either traveling and like this meeting people, giving lectures and going for public harinams or I'm sitting and writing. These are the two main phases of my life. What about you? I do the same things, but I don't travel. <laughs> that's nice. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's basically the same for everyone. The basic program is the same. You have a bead bag. Put your hand in it. Pick up the beads. And you say, what do you say? And then you move your hand to the next beat. <laughs> and then what do you say? <laughs> you go on like that. I know, I know. We chant at least 16 rounds of Hare Krishna Mahamantra every day. And then the rest of the day is dedicated to actualizing our chanting. That means that when we're chanting Hare Krishna, we're asking Krishna, please engage me in your service. And the rest of the day is dedicated to putting that into practice. And it may be different in different ways for different devotees. But the basic principle is the same for everyone. Is that a church they're singing or is this? Yes, it's a church. It's people singing, actual yes. live singing. Yeah. The Catholic Church lives on in some places. It's a Protestant church. No, it's a Catholic church. I have uh, one disciple, he lives in one area of London. And uh, so he was he was a shopkeeper in that where he was at that time. So he was organizing the local people to against thieves and all this kind of thing. So he got in he got to know the local priests. And the priest invited him to come to the church on for the main service on Christmas Day. So he went, there's a borough of London with, you know, maybe, I don't know, 
probably at least a hundred thousand people living there in the close area. So this is the main service of the year. The priest was there, he was there, and one old lady was there. So don't make our Krishna conscious movement like that. There has to be life. Life comes from dedication. Because they compromise so much, and there's, there's nothing there for people to go to. There's no transcendental experience. When I was a kid at school, I, it was a Catholic school. I have something in common with you. So uh, they were having the same problem that, that the young people, which was us at that time, uh, they weren't interested in religion. So they were trying to do things like having guitars and singing songs. Jesus, Jesus, ding 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 ding. ding. <laughs> we love you. <laughs> but it didn't work. Because there was no substance. There. There's, no, there's nothing. There's no. For a start, we weren't interested in spiritual life in the slightest because you know, we're just young. And our, we're just uh, experiencing the opportunities to indulge our, sen our very strong senses. But uh, they're trying to uh, make it attractive, but failed. So it's the same thing that uh, unless there is a, if we have that strong spirit of really desiring to please Krishna, serve the Sankirtan mission, then uh, we may resort to gimmicks to try to bring people, but it, it won't last. Or even Superficial people may be attracted to some gimmicks, but the, the real substance is surrender. There's no replacement for that, for that dedication and surrender. Then comes the bliss of Krishna consciousness. Nowadays it's very popular to talk about Krishna Prem and gopis and all this, but without surrender, without strictly following the regulated principles, it's it's just talk, that's all. So, anything else? Yeah. What is the purpose of a temple? Is that the question? The purpose of a temple is to give shelter and training to persons interested in Krishna consciousness, serious about Krishna consciousness, to, uh, for those who are living, and then to set an example for people not living in the temple so that they can, at home, practice Krishna consciousness and as a base for preaching Krishna consciousness, for going out to preach Krishna consciousness in various places. So these are the basically the purposes of the temples. They're not essential for spreading Krishna consciousness, but they are certainly important. <laughs> Which language are they singing in? It's Croatian. Croatian. What are they singing? Can you make it out? Oh my Lord, be blessed the who came in the name of God. That means Jesus. Yeah. They're blessing him? God pray for us. Yeah. We praise Him. Yeah, that's nice. 
ясен чирич и на сплит, а след да се дали върхи ол марин и да се дали с ол чирич, да се чак. И да се дали пипла към и да се дали фейбес, да се пипла към и да се дали 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 към I read this, but it is plain that ten avatars of Vishnu, Buddha and Parashuram, they are... So Buddha and Parashuram. Buddha and Parashuram, mm. they are... They are, they are Sh- not... Uh, Shakti Avesh. Yeah, they are Shakti Avesh. And why are they, uh, are they included among ten incarnations of Vishnu if they are not? Why among the ten uh, Dasavata are Buddha and Parashuram included? Shakyavesh avatar means they act... Can I translate? Yeah, okay, sorry. Uh, that's a bit of uh, considering Buddha and Parashuram was very honest to Shakyavesh avatar. How could they also be included in the death of As as From the conditioned soul's point of view, there's no difference between the activities of a Shakyavesh avatar and a regular Vishnu tabla. Avatar. Shakti Avesh means they are fully empowered with the power of God for performing a particular activity. So these Das Avatars, they are important for us here in the material world. They appear here in this material world and perform specific activities. So Parashuram and Buddha have been included. They're not full Vishnu avatars, maybe Lord Vishnu doesn't, or didn't personally want to do their activities. But he empowered certain persons to, to do so. There was one question we were discussing last time here, about whether Purim Prabhu was there about uh, demigods existing in the spiritual world. Are there folks who were there are persons in the Vaikuntha Lokas who there are certain persons who may appear similar to the, or rather demigods appear similar to them just like this uh, Vinayaka Ganesh there's a represent or rather the originals in the spiritual world what is their function there? I'm not sure exactly how they're serving the Lord there. Maybe they're in the administration of the spiritual world also. I can't say exactly. Actually, the question was that uh, there is no need for electricity or light, but still for... But still there's moon, sun, yeah. there, those things are there. There's no need. I mean, there's no need for yeah, still the, the moon and sun are there in Krishna's Leela. There's no need just like for, for nourishment of the the uh, earth and for maintaining the cosmic order. There's no need. But the, the moon and the sun, yeah, that's the answer actually. The moon and the sun in Krishna Leela, they contribute to Krishna's pastimes. So we can say that like the, the, the forms which to us appear like demigods or in the spiritual world, they have a particular contribution to Krishna's pastimes. Everything in the spiritual world is meant for Krishna's pleasure. In various, everyone has their service to perform for Krishna's pleasure. And someone else had a question? How can a person, how can a person develop a taste for the holy name? What is the best way to develop a taste? What is the best way? Well, it's it's a it's a composite of ways. The way is to perform devotional service, to follow the process of bhakti yoga. See all there, all these how 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 to questions. How can I become humble? 
How can I become sincere? How can I develop a taste? But the answer in every case is to follow the process of bhakti yoga. And this, all these things come by following the process. It's not that I'm going to give you an answer. Look, you know, Rupa Goswami said this in Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu, but I've got something else special. I'm going to tell you how you can get a taste for the holy names, which Rupa Goswami hasn't given. There's no such thing. Everything is there. Follow the process, and in the course of time, if we follow sincerely and avoid offenses, then in the course of time, sincerity, humility, purity, sense control, taste for the holy names, everything will come. Follow the process very carefully. There is no other way. There is no pill. Or it's just like devotees, just like I tell you, there's devotees read something, someone was telling me that uh, someone had said that there's, they saw some some prayer to Radharani and if you say these prayers like a hundred, these long prayers, if you say them 108 times standing in Radhakund, then you can get direct darshan of Radharani, something like this. So one devotee did that and he went through it all. And then, anyway, it seems he didn't get whatever the result was supposed to be. Then he went back and he saw he left one sheet behind, the photocopied sheet. So even if you, even if he hadn't left it, you know, he, there was one verse missing at the end. So he did it, he chanted the whole thing 108 times. And the thing, we're always looking for some kind of shortcut, you know, that I'll, I'll stand in Radha Kund and 108 times I'll say this and then, you know, that's it, finished, I don't have to do it. But we should know that all, none of these things will have effect unless we do the basic things of controlling our mind and senses and surrendering to Krishna. There's no shortcut, there's no love of God without that. So we may think that, you know, I'll, I'll go and live in Vrindavan. We can't enter Vrindavan without controlling our mind and senses and surrendering to Krishna. You can get a ticket on whatever airlines. There's no Croatian airlines, there's a flight to Delhi. Anyway, you can buy an airline ticket, go to Delhi, plan it all out, get a taxi from the airport or whatever, go to Vrindavan, book your room in the guest house. You can go there. But actual going to Vrindavan is Vishoy Charya Kobe Shuddha Habe Man Kobe Yama Herabo Sri Vrindavan. means giving up desires for sense gratification. Then we can actually see Vrindavan and enter Vrindavan. So we, can, we should work on these basic processes very carefully. Then everything will come in due course. Of course, we can find, you know, some uh, some Maha Bhagavat, Maha Paramahamsa, Ashtotarashata Sri, who will say that you just come to me and I'll bless you, and then you'll get instant Krishna praying. And if we want, we can be cheated in such a way. And we, we can hear so many stories about gopis and so many things. Without the basic background of. Vishaya Charya Kabe Shuddha Habe Man. It's all to, to suggest to people that you can get instant gopi prem. It's just cheating. Just cheating. We have to do the basic things first. But this is the essence. It's the essence. This is the highest. It's the highest. We have to go through the basic stages first. I can walk into the school and say, the children are learning 2 plus 2 equals 2. Why, why are you teaching them 2 plus I'll teach them something higher. I will teach them calculus. Why are you teaching them 2 plus 2 equals 4? How are you going to teach the children calculus? If they don't know what 2 plus 2 equals 4 is, they don't know basic multiplication, algebra, and all the different steps, then how are you going to teach them calculus? You can tell the children, ah, they, yeah, they're just teaching you some basic oh, thing. I'll teach you something higher. And they may, oh, okay. And you can go to them, and the children can cheat themselves that you see, I got, now I'm on a higher level. But they're not. 
they can say calculus, cosine, tangents, all these words, but they don't understand what it means. Unless you, are, unless you have the basic training. So just have faith in this process. Follow it, and in course of time, everything will come. And this, I am saying it's nice, but this is not going to give love of God. Because there's no, for, for a start, it's not following the scientific process to become purified. And another thing, there's no such motive either. There's no such, if, if we tell these people that, here, we'll give you a process by which you can get pure love for God, they won't be interested. They won't, what can I get from them? Daily bread and everything else. Bread, wine, cheese, everything. What can I get from God? They haven't been trained in the, the process of loving God, which is based on pleasing Him, instead of going and asking God, you are very powerful, you should please me. So that is, you could say, a very primary stage of God consciousness. But no one's going to get love of God by doing this. It's not going to happen. Hmm. Yeah, what about it? It may be. Maybe some mysticism, but it's got nothing to do with love of God. There's a stigmata, it's called. Stigmata, is that how you say it? Yeah. That's matter. Mm -hmm. It may mean there's some mystic transference due to their intense concentration. But there's no training in, in loving or even understanding who God is. They made a big mistake. So many mistakes, but one major theological mistake they made is to ex to think that Jesus himself is the Godhead, which he never sent himself. They made so many mistakes. He had, he had some uh, personal experience. Is it okay, or maybe to ask this question, or maybe you have very time to speak with him later? Yeah. Personal experiences, they come basically under two headings. Material and spiritual. There are some practical questions here. Yeah. You can ask it now. You have to see the different circumstances. If there's no one else to help them, then then it would be. If there's no one else to help them, then you could you know, help with their material things and chant Hare Krishna to them. I can offer Krishna consciousness to them like by offering them prasadam. 
And then when they pass away, then you can come. <laughs> yeah, you can translate that? I said, when they pass away, then you can join the temple, whatever you want. That's what Chaitanya Mahaprabhu told Raghunath Bhatta Goswami. He said, uh, Raghunath Bhatta Goswami, who was the only son of his parents, it seems, he came to visit Chaitanya Mahaprabhu in, in Puri, and he, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said, your parents are old, you go back and don't marry. When you look after them, and then when they pass away, then you come and join me. Of course, his parents were Vaishnavas. So you can consider also, if the, if the state has some system for looking after old people, you could consider that the state do it also. It's also a possibility, because you, if you are serving Krishna by distributing books and so many things, you can help so many other people to become Krishna conscious. So there are different possibilities. Yeah, he said that his father is It's pretty difficult to help him to become Krishna conscious. Mm. Actually, his, his original question is a little bit longer, so I have to. Do you want to summarize it? The condition sold uh, for imperfection. And, and, uh, by my experience, in the uh, majority of cases, people are changing after they went through serious life suffering, they, and they become acceptable. Uh, at the end of their lives, I I work ho I have a job on on which uh, I very often meet. Uh, I have a job in the, um, I have a job on which I very often meet people uh, people with delicate uh, situations and. Uh, uh, and I have opportunity to use their sad position and start scientifically explaining uh, uh, how they all life they were actually wrong. What should I do? Uh, of course, uh, uh, of I'll course, put that on I pause when this is going on. Do you want to put that on pause? And the mm. Oh, they have so many physical difficulties, is it like that? Well, you, you, preaching, you see, is such a thing that uh, you have to see each individual how to deal with them. Um, if you read this Prabhupada Lilamrita, especially the whole, the whole big, unabridged, um, you'll find Prabhupada in so many different situations, how he met people, how he dealt with people. So there's no one formula of how to deal with people in Krishna consciousness in each situation, but you can get the, the basic idea is to gain people's attention and then speak to them about Krishna in a manner that they can accept what is being said. In many cases if people are, are distressed and they're willing to listen to you, um, you, I would imagine that in many cases you could tell them that in my personal life I found this to be very useful, you can try it also. And of course it's always very uh, helpful to give people Krishna Prasadam and 
Prabhupada's books. It's always very helpful to them. And as you say, there are many people in the later stages of life who take up Krishna consciousness. I just met one yesterday. He said, My life is like a Jamil, he told me. I first came in contact. You know the story of a Jamil? That's told in Srimad Bhagavatam. That he was a very pious young Brahmana or priest. But he got distracted due to association with a prostitute. And uh, he spent most of his life doing all bad things. Then just as he was about to die, he called out, Narayana, which is a name for Krishna. I'm just making the story very simple. And then he was, by the grace of Krishna, he was saved from death and then he had a chance to again take up Krishna consciousness. So this man told me yesterday that when I was 22 years old, I was in contact with the devotees. Then I went away. Now I'm 49. And he got his head shaved. He's all this long hair. <laughs> but now I'm coming back. Hare Krishna. There's one... Uh, lady I know, I mean she happens to be my disciple, she's from, uh, she's Bashkir, which means she's from Bashkirstan, which is a republic in Russia, Muslim republic. So she's living in Tatarstan, she was living there, which is another republic. So she knows Bashkir language and a little bit of Tatar and hardly any Russian. It's very simple old woman. But uh, she was the top book distributor in that town. So because she used to go with her grandson door to door in these apartment buildings. And you know, she's an old woman. She told Toby, we have to take this book and she wouldn't let them not take it. And because she was old, the people respected her. And many times people would tell her, well, I don't have money, which was true, because they don't get paid. Her. So she'd ask, well, when do you expect to get any money? She'd write it down and she'd come back. <laughs> so determined. So... In countries where people have a slight modicum of culture, which I can imagine from this going to the church and singing, they have some kind of culture left, something, it's, you know, it's like a, it's a drop of a perverted reflection of culture, but something is there. So people may still have some respect for older people. Is it like that here? There's a general kind of respect for older people. Is it, it's going away, is it? So the thing is that why do people? Why will you respect all if they're just drunkards, like you are saying? If they have, no, if themselves they live such a, a, a wanton life, then uh, no one will respect. Them. Wanton means unself-control, whimsical. But uh, if people have any respect for all the people, then that's, that's good for preaching, actually. You can use that. Just, I, I see myself uh, that people, I think just because the fact that I'm a little older than I used to be, which is true for most people, <laughs> they get older gradually, that people tend to, uh, I mean even gross karmis, they tend to take them more seriously. So it's also somewhat 
can be used in Krishna's service. This growing old business. They may think you're crazy, but then if you if they think well, you, if he's you know, if he's been practicing Krishna consciousness thirty, 30 years, then at least he's serious about being crazy. <laughs> Maybe it's not so crazy after all. Well, that, that came up recently, actually. Someone was saying that... Uh, someone was interviewing one of my godbrothers and said, no. You know, if he's been practicing Krishna consciousness for 30 years, then there must be something to it. There must be something serious. If, it, if you go on for so many years doing these things, which, after all, for most people to live for 30 years with no meat eating, no gambling, no illicit sex, and no intoxication, not even coffee. <laughs> I mean, people don't even, even consider that intoxication. Intoxication, probably in, probably here they don't even consider beer intoxication. It begins with, it begins with wine. Huh? Even that, that's hardly, that's also just something. Yeah. Intoxication means, yeah, it, actually it is. Prabhupada said that also. And I have a, a little bit is actually good for health. I'm not saying to drink wine, but... <laughs> but it can be good. A little bit. In Ayurveda, so there are so many medical <laughs> wines. So anyway, we don't take wine. But, uh, <laughs> but uh, you know, when they, they consider intoxication begins with like hard spirits, right? Yeah, the wine is just something you drink at home. In the church. In the church. <laughs> <laughs> So, so when we say coffee is intoxication, it's kind of, you know, coffee, you can't understand it. And then no TV, no holidays, I mean the holiday means you, you put the, you know, the family and the dog in the car and you drive off to the coast. And then you sit on the beach and in Sahotra Swami's words, you become a stool for corn. <laughs> inside it's stool and outside it's cooked brown. Is <laughs> <laughs> so we don't do that. We go to the beach also because you're at the beach. We go there and chant Hare Krishna. But we don't have a holiday as such. So people can't imagine how can you live like that. Well, either they're crazy or there's something serious about it. So people start to think, well, maybe there's something serious. So, being older is a good situation to preach also. It has its advantages. Another advantage is that even though we may have wasted all our life, now we know there's not much time and we have to be serious. Anything else? Here among the devotees, they say to each other, please pray to Krishna for my sake. Yeah, that's a Catholic thing, isn't it? Yes, yeah. Pray for me. Say a prayer for me. Is it okay that also for Kora, this is a prayer for me? Is it okay if we personally have some difficulties in spiritual life that we say prayers to Krishna to, for somebody else's sake? That's very nice. We should... Uh, it's, it's nice that we pray to Krishna for others. And it's nice we can ask others that 
you, you please you pray for me that means that we are seeking the blessings of the Vaishnavas we should always seek the blessings of the Vaishnavas so please pray for me Prabhupada said that to his disciples he said Prabhupada how, how can we pray for you he said you are all Vaishnavas Krishna will listen to your prayers Prabhupada was so humble he came to save us and he's asking us to pray for him now the service is finished <laughs> <laughs> I remember because I was also I used to go to church every Sunday and it just didn't seem right that we would go straight from the church over the road to the bar first of all open you know light a cigarette because it's 45 minutes they have no cigarette so come out chat a little bit and then go to the bar so something seemed wrong to me so we shouldn't do that in Krishna consciousness don't make it cheap don't make it another bona fide religion <laughs> bona fide religion accepted certified by the beef eaters <laughs> How should we preach to different to, to people who are already following religious process? Well, mostly we're, we're talking about Christians here, isn't it? Because we're in a uh, a nominally Christian country. Can we see how Prabhupada preached Christian? He said, stop eating meat and chant the names of God. And if they were to, Prabhupada wouldn't go beyond that. If they didn't agree to that, Prabhupada wouldn't. There's that, uh, there's that interview, you can see it's filmed, Prabhupada talking to Cardinal Daniello in France. And he was saying, we, the, the cardinal say, we should speak of higher things. Prophet said, no, first you accept this point. First you accept, stop killing animals. Then we can discuss other things. And uh, in Australia there were some people, there was one seminary where they accepted this. And they, on Prabhupada's direction they stopped eating meat. And actually not even Prabhupada's disciples. And... Uh, so Prabhupada was very pleased with that. But unless they have some, unless they're prepared to listen, there's not much use. If you have any experience, there's not. You have someone's like a committed Christian, and leave them and go on to someone else. Most of them, they're not willing to listen to what we have to say or to follow In general, for preaching um, among people in general, this program, having festivals with Harinam, distributing Prabhupada's books, distributing Prasada, that's for, for people. And then that's the general program for everyone. And then when they, if people express some more interest, then we can explain. But if we, if we just go onto the street and someone with no background, no interest, and try to convince them to change their lives. It's, Prabhupada indicated that it was almost a waste of time. It's better to, Prabhupada said, what will your three-minute speech do? Better than give them a book. Give them a book means give them one of Prabhupada's books. Go pull a book off the bookshelf. You have to give them a Prabhupada's books.
uglavnom hoće pričati o dva načina kako osoba može imati iskustvo neke. Previously you spoke how a person can have like how a person there are two ways how a person can gain experience. But this devotee uh, I think I misunderstood mistranslated this or he didn't hear this when you ask when you were when you were answering uh, his questions, his question that the mm. There are two ways how a person can gain experience in the right. oh, yeah. 